Well, good morning. I hope you're all doing well. I uh, promised this test a few days ago and uh, finally got around to doing it. Uh, if you look at the mag, it looks a little bit strange. And the reason is there's three powder coated rounds and three regular rounds. Now, if I were to fire six rounds, what I should expect to see is the power go down on each one. But what I think is going to happen is uh, the second, fourth, and sixth one are actually going to speed up a little bit because of powder coat. Now, powder coat, the reason I'm giving this a try is it's flexible. It's not really that hard, though it may seem like it. It's actually flexible and it's self-lubricating. So I think what it's going to do is it's going to uh, speed up the round a little bit. So I've got a block of ballistic gelatin here and I am going to give this a try. I haven't even aired up the gun all the way because that's not really the point. I'm not looking to see how fast it can go. What I'm looking for is the difference in speed between the coated and non-coated ones. So with that, let's give it a try. Okay, so now a funny thing has happened here. I don't know how well you're going to be able to see this. Let's see if I can get it to where the light's not hitting it too badly. If you look at those numbers, it's uh, 607 down to 574 as far as feet per second goes. I actually get a higher feet per second with a lower air charge. The air charge right now is at about 3,700 PSI. Uh, let's see here. The numbers, however, did not change a great deal between the uh, second, fourth, and six shot, so I could be wrong here. Um, I know with the lower pressures, I have tested this and the powder coat worked real well on that. So I think what I'm gonna have to do is uh, shoot the gun a couple times, get it down to lower pressure. I have had somebody buy the pellets a couple times and tell me that uh, the perfect operating pressure on this is actually on the lower end for these real light slugs. So I need to give that a try because these numbers aren't as good as I've gotten with, uh, with having the gun aired up at say 3,500 PSI, uh, 3,000 PSI. So probably worth another try. Now, as far as the ballistic gelatin goes though, good Lord, look at that. Uh, folks, if you know anything about ballistic gelatin, if you've fired regular guns before, this is what you wanna see from a regular bullet test. It going in there causing a great deal of disruption, which is exactly what's happened. If you look right in here, it's just one huge cloud where those bullets were fairly close together. But even the entrance trails of each one, it's just amazing. The other thing is, even though it's a light slug, not traveling particularly fast, we've got one, two right there. We've got a third one stuck into the wood. I know another one hit the wood and bounced off because I heard it. We've got a slug right there, if you're able to see that, right there. Let's get my fingers in there and tear it out. That uh, deformed pretty good. Actually, let me get uh, all three of these slugs. I can immediately put my hands on. All of them have a fair amount of distortion, so the uh, it got in there and was bent around by uh, hitting the ballistic gelatin. Uh, so that's four of the six, and again, I believe I had a couple shoot off. But if you start looking inside there, that is a pretty devastating wound cavity. I mean, that's what you want to see. If that gets in there and hits a fairly sol solid object, hits uh, organs, that sort of thing, it's going to do a tremendous amount of damage. Okay, so that's done. I'm going to grab one more thing and tell you what the next video is going to be about. It may be the next video. It may take a couple but this is a torsion spring tester. It's for testing specifically torsion springs of any sort. What you would normally do is take an adapter, something like this, put it into that hole, and as you twist it, you're gonna be able to see what the uh, torsion spring rating is. Now, what I plan to do is, uh, I've already got it drawn up, I'm gonna make an adapter that'll fit into this hole where I can put the magazine on it, start to twist it, and see what the readings are. Now, what I expect to find is, I think those readings are a little bit higher than they need to be, and I believe that's part of the problem. 
I was watching one of Macabre Speed's videos, and on one of the pellets, he showed a very large nick in the back. It was nice and square. And the only thing that could be cre uh, create that is the little arm that moves the bullets over. There was so much spring pressure that it actually created quite an indent into the lead. To me, that seems like too much. So what I'm going to do is uh, play around with that a little bit. Once I know what the spring is rated at, I'm going to look around and see if anybody sells a lower rated spring. I may even try some different springs and see how that works out. But anyway, that's about all I got today. Y'all take care. Bye-bye.